yourself laying in bed, blowing your nose, coughing up your lungs at least once in your life? Raise your hand. All right. And how many of you have suddenly felt the urge to, I don't know, break a pen, smash a window, or literally scream with all the voice you've got at least once in your life? Raise your hand. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. I know it may seem that those two questions are completely unrelated, but I'm here today to reveal their surprising connection. I'm going to tell you how your emotions change how your body works. We've all heard from somewhere about the devastating effects of stress on our bodies. I mean, psychologists write books at all the time. New medications appear on the shelves that are supposed to treat our sleeping disorder, migraine, anxiety, in most cases resulting from excessive amounts of stress. But we've also heard on the news about a growing number of people suffering from dangerous infections such as pneumonia, bronchitis, meningitis, all of those caused by low immunity. And we are familiar with the immense amount of medication used to treat both our stress and our low immunity, but separately. And of course, when we have either of those problems, we run to the closest pharmacy and find the answer in pills. But I want us to take it one step back and look at the origin of the problem, the cause and effect relationship between emotion and body response. So first of all, let's take a look at our surroundings. At the speed at which we live today, we need to live fast. Check the phone, read the news, stay connected, always updated, work hard, often too hard. Meet society's expectations every single day. It can be overwhelming sometimes. Because we're constantly doing something, even if it's simply scrolling through social media, which we consider as rest, our brain receives information that it needs to process, and thus never truly resting. And because we're so busy all the time, we lack this personal time just left for ourselves, our thoughts, our personal reflection. I mean, we don't really spend much time analyzing how a fight we had yesterday night affected our mood the next day. And because we lack this personal time for reflection, we often tend to fall into the trap of our own emotions, staying into angry or depressive moods for hours, days, even weeks, oblivious of the consequences this can have on our health and our body. And in general, when we think of ourselves as a whole, we tend to isolate our emotions from the series of biochemical reactions that happen inside of us. When in fact, we, as humans, are a bunch of complicated systems that seem to work well with each other in a unique way. Now, let me show you how it works. Can you all please stand up for a moment? Great. Now, you can all sit down. Do you realize what you just did? You had a conscious thought of standing up, so your brain sent signals to your neurons, to your legs, so they could move in a particular way so that you could stand up. Just like this simple thought can make a body part move, every single feeling that we experience impacts a certain part of our body. In 2013, Finnish scientists conducted research from which this heat map, or also known as the body atlas, was created. Over 700 participants were shown emotional pictures, stories, words, facial expression, movies, to which they reacted, and they were supposed to record which part of their own body changed as a result of the emotion they were experiencing, meaning which parts got warmer and which ones colder. And up here, red signifies warmth and blue cold, and black is neutral. So take a moment and observe the image. And you can relate it to yourself, I'm sure. I bet. All of you have been put out of your comfort zone at least once in your life. You had people tell you how much you're blushing and you felt a bit uncomfortable or ashamed. That was my case up there. And if we, if we see up there, it is the cheeks that warm up the most when we are a bit ashamed, which is exactly blushing. And this is just one example. Think about the last time you got really angry or frustrated. Didn't you feel like your chest was on fire or your head was going to explode? Just like on the silhouette up there? You see, this body atlas just proves that whatever happens in your brain inevitably impacts your body. But the changes in temperature are just a small aspect of what actually happens inside of us when we feel a certain way. In 2003, Richard Davison, a professor of psychology and psychiatry at the University of Wisconsin, decided to conduct research on the topic of emotion and body response. With his colleagues, they designed an experiment where 52 men and women at the age of 46 were asked to recall both of their best and their worst experiences in their entire lives on paper. 
after this autobiographical task, they were given flu vaccines and their antibody levels were measured after two weeks, four weeks, and six months. Now, a little bit of background information. The antibody levels refer to the strength of the immune system. Th this means that the higher the level of antibodies, meaning more antibodies, they're better at fighting diseases and infections, which means we have a stronger immunity, and vice versa. Also, during this autobiographical task, the electrical activity of the brain was measured, and more specifically, the prefrontal cortex. Or, for the duration of this talk, I'll refer to it as the PFC. The PFC is responsible for our behavior, decision-making, and even personality. So the PFC is divided into two parts, the left and the right PFC. The left PFC activates when we're joyful, experiencing positive emotions. And the right PFC, when we're angry, sad, or we experience fear. So interestingly enough, during this experiment, the researchers found that the people who had the greatest activity in their, in their right PFC, meaning when they were experiencing negative emotions, had a notably lower level of antibodies, meaning weaker immune system. And with contrast with the people who had the highest activity in the left PFC when they were experiencing happy emotions, had an increased level, had an increased level of antibodies, meaning their immune system got stronger. This way, the researchers found a clear link between the emotions we're experiencing and long-term effects on our immune system. So, in the end, the better the thought, the stronger the body, am I right? But why is that, you may ask? Well, the short answer is neurology and biochemistry. But let me give you a very simple example, step by step, of what actually happens inside of your body when you feel a certain way. All right, let's take sadness, for example. Actually, sadness is a tricky emotion since our brain perceives it as stress because it disrupts the normal functioning of the body the same way stress does. So when this happens, our brain releases the stress hormones adrenaline and cortisol, which prepare our bodies for immediate action. And this so-called defense mechanism was especially useful in the past for our ancestors as when they went hunting, for example, and saw a bear approaching, they were able to run away from the danger and run fast which ultimately saved their lives. But nowadays, the picture is a little bit different. We tend to experience stress over long periods of time, over and over again, while we continue to release those stress hormones, which actually um, raises our blood pressure and blood sugar. And although we may not necessarily realize it on a, on a daily basis, this slows down our heart and actually prevents it from using its full blood pumping capacity and this could be even fatal sometimes. In fact, in 2015, researchers from Case Western University found that high blood pressure and high blood sugar unleash destructive molecules that interfere with the body's natural defense mechanism, which is our immune system. Simply put, there is some strong evidence that negative emotions can really weaken our immune system in the long term, while positive emotions, on the other hand, really have a great impact on our immune system, making us immune to all sorts of diseases and uh, dangerous infections, and they raise our antibody levels. Now, I'm not trying to convince you that having a constant positive attitude will make you immune to any disease. No, impossible. But the point is to understand what kind of impact we can have on ourselves on a daily basis through our emotions. Maybe next time you can ask yourself, is it really worth it thinking about the really bad moment I had last week while I re-experienced the heating in my chest or the cold in my feet? Because the speed at which we live today, life is all about appreciating the small moments that make us truly happy or thrilled. So spend time with the people you love, find a new hobby, ride a roller coaster. Those are the times when we heal ourselves, both metaphorically and literally. So why not create more happy moments for yourself and those around you? It's natural medicine. Thank you.